जय भीम जय मुलिमासी यू आर वाचिंग एम एन टी न्यूज नेटवर्क वी आर अगेन अपियरिंग वी आर अगेन हियर टू डिस्कस द टॉपिक इन इंग्लिश टुडे इज संडे एंड एवरी संडे वी हैव इन इंग्लिश सो टुडे द टॉपिक इन इंग्लिश इज द स्कोर ऑफ इंडिया इन द ग्लोबल हंगर इंडेक्स 2023 is worse than neighboring countries and we have eminent speaker today mulnivasi dr p s kamle sir who is economist and analyst at shivaji university kolhapur we will discuss this topic with him uh, before that i want to request you that uh, please do uh, like and share this mnt news network and uh, uh, bring your friends and families to watch every day Uh, this mnt news network uh, be the part of the mulnivasi movement and uh, you know as far as you will share it you will expedite the speed of this uh, mulnivasi movement uh, let us invite the today's speaker on the screen and let us warm welcome him sir very very warm welcome to you javin jamulnivasi sir thank you thank you very much thanks a lot thank you very much ah, sir uh, so as we have seen the uh, a score of india in the global hunger index and uh, that is what we are here to discuss uh, first you know uh, i would like to know from you that uh, this uh, topic is how relevant how important to discuss and uh, you know why we are discussing uh, this on mnt news network because uh, generally this uh, topic uh, uh you not find in the mainstream media you you know uh, it's only the bahujan mulnivasi are more concerned about that uh so uh let us you start from here when relation and whenever i have some question or doubt uh, i will come and ask you sir okay okay thank you very much uh, sanjeev kumar and uh, my special thanks to mnt english for organizing such a discussion on very important current as well as burning topic what is the need for discussing this particular topic two three reasons can be given in support of how it is necessary to discuss this topic number one is uh, it is a reality that india is the fastest growing economy and there is a very close relationship between growth and standard of living of the people with the increase in growth it is expected improvement and enhancement in the standard of living of the people to, to take place number 2 is that 2030 all members of united nations organization they have to realize and achieve sustainable development goals yeah and two very important sustainable development goals are there relating to present topic of discussion yeah. number one is there should be zero poverty by 2030 and there oh. should be zero hunger by 2030 and yes naturally india is the active member of the united nations organization and therefore naturally it is expected and desirable to realize and achieve the sustainable development goals and it is also very much necessary number 3 is that uh, the country desires to realize and achieve economically developed country at this moment we are developing economy developing country and we have a goal of to uh, by 2047 to emerge out to realize as economically developed country in the world like that of america uh, uk france germany italy like that yeah and very important reason india want wants to realize 5 trillion in dollar, dollar economy realize economic supremacy in the world and more importantly it desire to realize and achieve and develop education system in such a manner as the result of which india will be a vishwa guru in this backdrop how the the uh, reality is there what reality is there that requires to be discussed that requires to be studied when we wanted to realize 5 trillion is dollar economy when we want to emerge out economically developed a country yes we are the fastest growing economy in the world we want to realize and emerge out as vishwa guru in the world in this backdrop what is the status of poverty what is the status of hunger how it is how it is behaving what trend is there that it was to be discussed and recently only 
global hunger index 23 report has been published and it is widely being discussed it is very important because uh, many of the countries of the world are members of united nations organization and they have to realize and achieve zero poverty and zero hunger by 2030 which are very important and very crucial very uh, very very significant goals of uh, sustainable development goals and therefore this uh, global hunger index how tr what trend is there and how it is behaving in the context of our country there is no need for thinking of others but we will make a comparison especially of the neighboring countries what trend is there in global hunger index and how it is behaving what improvement and uh, uh, development is taking place or they have realized that yeah. requires to be discussed basically uh, this global hunger index is a peer reviewed annual report which is published by two international level organizations institutions number one is concerned worldwide concerned okay. worldwide and second is wealth hunger life these are the two organization institutions at global level though they are publishing every year per annum this global hunger index report yeah it is a peer reviewed annual report and it is it is attempted to measure what is the status and extent and magnitude and what trend is there in global hun hunger and this global hunger not relating to only the world but across the countries as well across oh. the region as well and across the country level as well at different levels what trend is there in global hunger that is being indicated measured by this global hunger index and that is published in the form of global hunger, uh, hunger index uh, report the intention is to uh, highlight to bring out what is the status of hunger how it is behaving what is the status of hunger in developed countries developing countries might be regions and to create awareness knowledge and education among the people among the policy makers among the uh, uh, activists and organizations as the result of which because of awareness knowledge and education the efforts will be made short to bring about improvement if there is a deterioration if there is a, a continuous increasing trend in hunger or status of hunger that is there and it is therefore for that reason data is being collected by these two agencies by these two organizations and the report is published and it is uh, made open to the public domain as the result of which at global level discussion should take place policy makers should look into that what is there what weaknesses lacunas are there uh, citizens society they should look at how it is behaving and prominently being members of united nations organization by 2030 is it possible two very important sustainable development goals one, one is poverty, zero poverty, and another is zero hunger. Mm. Now, talking about India, the 2023 Global Hunger Index report has been published. And in this Global Hunger Index number, total 125 countries have been taken into account, have been considered, out of which India ranks at 111. Mm. Total number of countries which are considered for the estimation calculation of global hunger index is just 125, 125, mm. and we stand at 111. Mm. Is, it, is, it, is it justifiable for economic supremacy? Is mm. it justifiable to emerge out as Vishwaguru? Is it justifiable to realize and achieve 5 trillion US dollar economy? Does it justify the Vishwaguru that is our dream? And that requires to be discussed. Our value under the this global hunger index is 28.7, 28.7. The, the values of this global hunger index are classified into, into uh, five categories, into five groups, yes. five range are there. Okay. And within which it is identified whether the problem of hunger is serious or not, yes. whether the problem of hunger is, uh, uh, is of lower or the least level that is being classified, that is being defined by this global hunger index. When the value of global hunger index is equal to 9.9 .9 or less than 9 to 9.9, .9, it is the intensity of problem of hunger is low. It yeah. is low. When the value of this index is between 10 to 19.9, .9, 
the problem of hunger is in uh, moderate it is of moderate level it is yeah. at moderate level that is 10 to 19.9 yeah when the value of global hunger index is between 20 to 34.9 it is a serious problem yeah. it is a serious problem so far as the problem of starvation relating to the country that we are taking into consideration that we take it on account when the value of this index is between 35 to 49.9 it is alarming it is red signal it is red signal it is it is you should make an effort hmm. otherwise that will be beyond your control hmm. it will not be possible so far as control the intensity gravity depth and extensivity of the hunger problem Uh, that is there and lastly when the value of this index is uh, greater than 50 or equal to 50 it is extremely alarming mm. it is beyond your control mm. what your measures and remedies and policies that you are going to formulate and implement what your maybe the extent and magnitude of your sincerity or honesty regress regressness rather it is difficult to realize in achieve and to comply and to tackle the problem of hunger these are the five categories mm. these are the five groups within which the intensity gravity of the problem of hunger has been defined mm. when it is na point 9.9 equal to or less than its intensity is low when between 10 to 19.9 intensity is moderate when it is 20 to 34.9 intensity is serious when it is 35 to 49.9 it is alarming and when it is 50 or greater than 50 it is extremely alarming mm. now one one more point that i will explain and then i will proceed further towards the analysis of the trends in global hunger index in the context of india or with reference to india and yeah. what are the implications and what are the repercussions consequences those are being reflected by the trend in this global hunger index relating to india at the same time i will also try to touch upon i will also cover what is the status and trend of global hunger index relating to the neighboring countries like nepal might be there china might be there pakistan mm. might be there sri lanka might be there that also yeah. i will make a comparison because they are not the economically supreme countries they are yeah. not the uh, dreaming of the vishu gurus they are not the economies of high trillion dollar economy they don't have a desire to realize and achieve and emerge out as economically developed countries so far as these neighboring countries are concerned except except china all others are developing and backward and very poor countries so yeah. that comparison also highlights whether we are we are missing whether we are making committing mistakes and uh, weaknesses and uh, pitfalls are there as the result of which rather we have not succeeded in realizing and achieving and The, the desirable level and extent of the uh, this uh, uh, hunger which is very urgent need of the world so far as realizing sustainable development goal by 2030 that is zero hunger and zero poverty already we have spent 75 years we are yeah. celebrating azadi ka amrut mahotsav hmm. whether it is it is viable in the azadi ka amrut mahotsav as well the extent and magnitude of the level of hunger that we are exp- experiencing is it justifiable or we are neglecting and we are excluding that that problem or we are we are just uh, uh, ignorant about that what reality is there so that yeah. also is being highlighted by when we analyze and explain the trend that is there in comparison with the neighboring countries which are except china which are prominently backward and very very poor countries so far as uh, compared to the indian economy is concerned Yeah. in this global hunger index basically it has four components global hunger index has four components one is undernourishment undernourishment is percentage of population with insufficient calorie intake hmm. calorie energy which is generated by consuming food is inadequate that is known as a undernourishment that is called as a undernourishment number 2 is child stunting when a child is below the 5 years age and his age or her age or its age is less than whatever desirable or required to that level of that level of uh, uh, height 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 is inadequate in comparison with the 
a, a, the age that is there hmm. that is known as a child stunting that is height is significantly lesser significantly meager in comparison with the age of that child and that is because of malnutrition that is because of malnutrition because of undernourishment height level is adversely affected and hmm. therefore it is considered as one of the indicators of this hunger because unless and until uh, desirable nourishment is there then and then only height can increase otherwise in in the situation of undernourishment no no this uh, uh, height can increase and therefore the second component of global hunger index is uh, child stunting that is height is lesser than desirable of the children of the children below the 5 years age third is child wasting child wasting is in the case of a child having higher age weight is very meager in comparison with the age whatever a weight is required to that level of age is not it is not there and again this is because of undernourishment again this is because of undernourishment and therefore child wasting is considered as also one of the indicators of one of the criteria of uh, this global hunger then child mortality is the death rate of children and uh, this is what the child mortality is there that is the death rate among the children below the 5 years age and therefore these are the four components of global hunger index one is undernourishment another is child stunting third is child wasting and fourth is child child mortality yes yeah. and when the trend of global hunger index is taken into account in the context of india it is found that in 2000 in the year 2000 the value of global hunger index of india for india was 38.4 it was oh. 38.4 in 2008 it was 35.5 oh. 35.5 in 2015 it was just 29.2 oh. and in 2023 it is 28.7 so from 2000 to 23 it is a it is a period of 23 years hmm. during the period of 23 years we have improved our situation of hunger by 10 points only hmm. which decreased from 38.4 to 28.7 hmm. and the peculiarity is that this 28.7 is in the range of in the group of the problem is serious serious problem is serious yeah. even though a little bit decrease is found yeah even though little bit improvement in the situation of hunger is found that is not sufficient and adequate hmm. it shows that the problem of hunger is serious problem of hunger is serious which requires due attention hmm. which requires due attention <laughs> so for the components of hunger index relating to india is taken into account that also shows to what extent the improvement has taken place hmm. to the level extent required to the extent level required that is that is not being taking place take example the proportion of population and under undernourishment that was more than 50% in 2000 hmm. now it is 38% in 2023 you hmm. can imagine yeah 38% we are 144 crore oh. our population population of india is hmm. more than 140 crore that is 144 crore yeah. out of which 38% population is suffering from the problem of starvation <laughs> suffering from the problem of hunger and so far as child wasting is concerned 
child wasting has remained more or less the constant it has remained at more or less the constant level 18 percent in 2000 also it was 18 percent in 23 also it is 18 percent and this child wasting child wasting is inadequate weight inadequate weight or insufficient weight and it has remained at constantly 18 percent 18 percent general are underrated in proportion to age in comparison with their age 18 percent and child stunting that is height inadequate Hmm. Short, shortfall of height that is also more or less the constant it is uh, 18 percent 18 percent that is child stunting and child wasting remain the same at okay. same level they are hmm. they are at same level one more parameter is child mortality hmm. the deaths yeah. rate of death mortality rate in the case of children below the below the age 5 hmm. below the age 5 and it is it was 8% in 2000 which is about 5% in 2023 hmm. so in the period of 23 years we just succeeded in reducing mortality rate among the children below the five years is by by 50 percent it was 10 percent now it is five percent mm. so all these indicators explain that the improvement in tackling the problem of hunger starvation to the extent required we have not succeeded mm. To the right. extent required, we are not succeeded because all the parameters, <clears throat> all the indicators, those are indicating progress is not satisfactory. Hmm. Progress is not happy. It is disappointing because right. number one is we are we are in the age we, we are in the range of serious problem. Problem of starvation is serious because our value of 2023 is 28.7, we can say 29. Mm -hmm. And it is in the age group, uh, in the value of range, 20 to 34.9. Mm -hmm. So in this range, in this range, uh, it is taking place. Yeah. And it is therefore, it is therefore, the problem of starvation is serious it is serious that that is indicated there that is shown there mm. and therefore it is of crucial importance to take into account mm -hmm. how the problem of hunger we have not succeeded mm. our constitution tells us right to live mm. Right to live a reasonable life, a comparable life. Mm. And here is a problem of hunger. Here is a problem of hunger. Is it comparable? It is a reasonable life. Constitution has given that right. Even Constitution has given that right. We have not succeeded. We have not succeeded. That is the tragedy. And all of us know Constitution is the basic law. Yeah. It is the basic law of any country. Yeah. It is the basic law of any country which assures number of things, which assures number of gives a number of assur assurances. Yeah. Take into account how hunger is a problem. <clears throat> and all of us know poverty and hunger are very closely related. And both Zero poverty as well as zero hunger. We have to realize by 2030, not only for us, but for all the members of United Nations organization. 
But yeah. their situation might not be there like a, like that of us. That the studies require, that research is required. Now this is what, till this moment, what I try to explain is what the what the concept of or what the device or instrument of global hunger index, how it is being measured, how it is being estimated, and how it is to be interpreted, right. how it is divided into uh, <laughs> groups or categories like low, moderate, serious, alarming, and extremely alarming. Yeah. And what trend is there in the case of uh, global hunger index for India for the year 2023, its value is 28.7. And it comes in the category of 20 to 34.9. It is a serious problem of hunger. And the analysis of trend relating to hunger, uh, the global hunger index, as well as the components, that is, uh, uh, child undernourishment, child stunting, child wasting, and child mortality, all okay. those show progress is not satisfactory. Yeah. Progress is not happy. It is disappointing. This is what it, it, it highlights before us. It shows that, before us uh -huh. we are not that serious. Uh, we are not that rigorous, honest. So far as uh, looking towards the problem of starvation and consequently remedies, measures and policies that we formulate and implement in 75 years of independence. We are celebrating uh, Azadi Kamrut Motso. But we are dreaming of economic supremacy. <laughs> we are dreaming of $5 trillion US dollar economy. We are dreaming of uh, uh, economically developed a country by 2047. We are dreaming of uh, Vishu Guru in this backdrop. Are we justifying? Are we giving justice to the problem of hunger and poverty? Not at all. Not at all. This is what the picture of global hunger index or hunger in the context of global hunger index of India is concerned. Sure. That is not. I also try to explain how the what trend is there in undernourishment. What trend is there in child stunting, child wasting, child mortality? Because these are the very important components. Because undernourishment has one third weightage, child stunting has one sixth weightage, child wasting has one sixth weightage, child mortality has one third weightage, and that also requires to be taken into consideration so far as the global hunger and the problem of global the hunger in the in India in comparison with the globe is concerned. Uh, sir, we have understood the uh, problem. Yeah, uh, uh, this hunger index has uh, pointed very clearly. Uh, yes. Now the thing, and you analyze it very uh, beautifully. That you know, uh, but the thing is that uh, what is the solution? And you pointed that the constitution yes, yes. Yes, has yes. given before, the right to live a yes. dignified life. Yeah. Yes. So, before going to solution, uh, what what situation of global hunger uh, index or hunger problem is there in comparison with our neighboring countries? That will I will explain. And I will I think just, just a brief, if you can give just oh. a brief, I did not. Okay, do okay, it. okay. Uh, take example, uh, suppose only neighboring countries are taken into account. China is in good condition. Mm. In China, the value of global hunger index for 2023 is less than 5. So problem ah. is not there. No. Previously, it was 13.4. That is the problem was at moderate level. Moderate. Problem was at moderate level. Then uh, we have... Uh, only, only uh, then uh, Jamaica, South Africa, mm. South Africa, Jamaica, these are African countries. Mm. Those are also underdeveloped. Those are also in the low hunger level, low hunger situation. Oh. Uh, uh, then Malaysia, mm. Malaysia's value in 2023 is 12.5. That is, it is at moderate level. Mm. Problem of hunger is at uh, at moderate level and it is not serious. Very important Sri Lanka. Mm. It is just island, no? Yes. Sri Lanka, the value of global hunger index is 13.3. That is, the problem just, is, problem is at moderate <laughs> level. It is not serious. Yeah, lowest It is not serious. Time. And they have realized this from 21.7 in 2000. That is, from serious level from serious level to moderate level mm. so sri lanka is concerned then nepal nepal is a very small country 
Yeah. That is also hunger problem at moderate level. Hmm. Hunger problem at moderate level. We they 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 improved from thirty seven point two in two thousand two thousand hmm. and thirty seven point two means alarming. Hmm. Yes. Alarm is alarming. Red red yeah. red red signal it is. Yeah. Then uh, we have Pakistan. Hmm. Its value in two thousand twenty three is twenty six point six. That is problem is alarming. Hmm. But they have improved from thirty six point. 36.7 yeah and our sea is 38.4 to 28.7 mm. 10% decrease but 28.7 is a hunger problem is serious mm. so when we make a comparison only the remaining countries in this global hunger index just i will highlight those are yeah. exclusively small countries and backward countries yes those are uh, timor Mozambique, Afghanistan, mm. Haiti, Li Libya, mm. Niger. These are very small countries yeah. and prominently underdeveloped countries. And this adequately highlights this adequately highlights how the problem of hunger uh, is. Uh, they have succeeded. Mm. So far as Nepal is concerned, China is concerned, uh, Pakistan is concerned, Sri Lanka is concerned. But to that extent, we have not succeeded because they are not claiming their economy is vital in economy. They are not claiming we are the fastest growing economy. They are not yeah. claiming by 2047 we want to emerge out of as economically developed country. They are not claiming we are economically supreme country. They are not claiming we want to be realized as a Vishwa Guru. And therefore, yeah. we have succeeded, but to that extent, we have not succeeded. So why this is happening? This is happening. We are violating constitution. In mm. Constitution right to live is there, mm. but we are we are violating constitution, and we are violating right to live. Number one, we are pol formulating policies for poverty removal and hunger removal, but those are like that of political problems, like political agenda, like political announcement and declarations. No sincerity, honesty. Uh, is there in implementation of remedies and measures and policies uh, that is there? Actually, why this is happening? This is happening because we are growing economically, we are growing rapidly, significantly, but employment generation on employment front we are failure, we are oh. failed. Therefore, unemployment is increasing. Mm. Rate of employment generation is one percent at national level, public sector minus. So unemployment is growing. In April 2020, rate of unemployment was 25 percent. In 2023, this mm. it is it is 10 percent. Economic theory tells us that in any country, rate of unemployment equal to 33 percent, 3 percent is sustainable. Mm. It is known mm. as natural rate of unemployment mm. because of Less employment generation, increase in unemployment, poverty is increasing. <clears throat> and we have very narrow definition of poverty line. Uh, 37 rupees for rural area per day per capita mm. and 40 rupees for urban area, not 50 rupees also. At international level, two and a half American dollar is poverty line. It comes at more than 250 rupees and ours is not 50 rupees as well. Even that is taken into account. People below the poverty line is in crores, in crores. And by 2030, we have to realize zero poverty and zero starvation. Therefore, growth is taking place. Employment is not adequate. Unemployment is increasing. Poverty is increasing. Multidimensional poverty index report has been published by Niti Aayog in 2022. And it tells us that Intensity of poverty, as per the multidimensional poverty index of India, it is 25%. That is, of the 144 crore, 25% population is multidimensionally poor. And consequently, growth is taking place, employment is not there, unemployment is there, poverty is there. Consequently, inequality is increasing. Consequently, inequality is increasing. And the result of which, 
latest world inequality report has been published. Before that, in the beginning, Thomas Piketty, for the first time, presented what trend is there in inequality at global level and especially relating to India. And he cautioned the problem of inequality is very increasing rapidly and significantly. As per 2022 report of world inequality, 50% population, poor population in India, have a 6% share in national income of India. And 50% poor population is having 6.5% share in national wealth of India. But 20% richest family, they are having share in national income of India equal to 57%. Mm. And share in national wealth is 65-66%. You can see what, what inequality is there. And therefore, the uh, households having billionaire Billionaire households, their number is increasing rapidly and significantly in India. In the list of billionaires being published at global level, our number is increasing. Why growth is taking place, but its benefits are not being distributed among the people. All strata of the society and prominently poor strata, prominently socially deprived communities in the country, bhojans in the country, and consequently uh, the. Uh, hunger is increasing, okay. inequalities are increasing, poverty is increasing, that is there. Why this is happening? Number one, privatization, mm. liberalization, globalization. Government is withering away from the, from the intervention. Government is withering away from the economic development activities. Mm. Government is saying it is not our duty and responsibility to run banks, to run public sector undertakings, mm. to generate employment to run insurance corporations like that. At this moment, there is not a single public sector undertaking both of the central government and state government, which is exclusively owned by the government. Take railway, take nationalist banks. 30 banks were there. At this moment, 10 banks are there. Insurance corporation, number of public sector under, all have been privatized. And no control at all. We have a, a wrong belief that private is the best and public is the wrong. Government is the white, bad, private is the best. And consequently, we are just privatizing. We are consequently privatizing, liberalizing economy, no control. We are moving, moving towards market economy, pre economy, neoliberal economy. Ours is a mixed economy. We are vanishing that identity and <clears throat> we are moving towards market economy. We are moving towards liberal economy private sector dominated economy and because of which such problems are taking place. Government is not formulating such policies because government is withering away. Government is saying it is not our duty and responsibility. It is duty and responsibility of the private players, private sector. Mm. Expenditure on social welfare is being cut down. Mm. Employment generation program expenditure is being cut down. Mm. On education, less than 4% GDP expenditure. Mm. is spent by central and state government. On mm. health, it was just 1.1% of GDP. Now it is mm. increased to 2.1% during Corona pandemic period. If mm. that is taken into account, the policies, remedies and measures which are being introduced and implemented are just dismal, mm. are just disappointing. The required attention is not being given. We are mm. not seeing the honest rigorous of our <coughs> tackling and removing the problems, removal of the problems like poverty, and, and starvation and now we are becoming cautious and serious because by 2030 we have to realize zero poverty zero zero hunger consequently how to how to tackle that is a problem so what can be policy direction what can be policy forward what remedies and measures can be implemented what is the desirable policy so far as the tackling of tackling of a problem of hunger by 2030 and mm. it is it is also uh, jointly to be tackled the problem of poverty as well. Mm. Number one is that within the constitution framework only, constitution framework only, we should formulate a policy exclusively directed towards hunger and poverty. Mm. And a lot of budgetary provisions are necessary to be made and programs and schemes are necessary to be implemented very mm. rigorously, serious, seriously, honestly to tackle the problem of hunger and poverty. Because mm. seven years are at our hands. We have already spent more than 75 years. Mm. Thirdly, ours 
economy is a mixed economy and there should be both private sector and public sector we are dismantling we are vanishing public sector and that is causing a heavy burden of hunger and poverty so mm -hmm. identity of mixed economy both private sector public sector should exist they should go hand in hand and there should be control and monitoring over the private sector mm -hmm. private sector also play a role about the employment generation about the controlling of un uh, uh, unemployment and inequality and removal of poverty and hunger and their role is also expected and desirable because even ours is a mixed economy indian economy is dominated by the by the private sector economy it is a private economy mm -hmm. due attention is required to be given to education and health mm -hmm. due attention is required to be given to employment generation and right to you mm -hmm. and when this the, in that direction the efforts are being made yes covid pandemic <laughs> has adversely affected the problem of poverty and hunger intensively but we should be ready that such such problems can be there in the future as well because that yes. is not in our hands yes covid yes. pandemic is not in our hands unexpectedly yes. accidentally that came and vanished growth as well as intensified the problem of poverty inequality unemployment and in uh, this uh, hunger as well so we should be ready we should be be prepared and unless and until in that direction the efforts are being made by 2030 rather it is impossible mm. rather it is difficult to realize and achieve zero poverty and zero starvation which are the major goals of the sustainable development which will mm. be realized by india and along with in the other countries are also there so if there is need for education knowledge awareness about the constitution uh, worthiness trust over the constitution that is of crucial importance that is very much needed and every citizen every social activist every political party political activist our representative ministries and prominent bureaucrats they should be well educated well trained and well aware about the constitution excluding mm -hmm. constitution nothing is there in india constitution mm. well and all provisions are there in the constitution if right to live is honestly rigorously sincerely implemented policies are formulated remedies and measures are introduced and implemented there will not be a problem of this poverty and hunger mm. if we are trying for rapid growth significant growth five trillion year dollar economy by 2047 economy developed country we should pay attention towards employment generation India is a youth country. India is a youth country. More than sixty oh. percent population is uh, young India. Yeah. So they should be given employment. Yeah. They should be given education. They should be provided uh, uh, health facilities, oh. and they should be employed. Unless and until yeah. in that direction the efforts are being made, rather it will be impossible. Rather it will be difficult. So the the, the intention, the purpose for which this program has been introduced, if it is reached to the society. if it is reached to the every citizen to the political activists social activists our representatives bureaucrats then the the purpose will be served the mm -hmm. purpose will, it is not impossible but sincere honest rigorous efforts are required there should not be politicization there should be integrity there should be the the modus operandi of working hand to hand and if in that direction the efforts are being made i am damn sure i am damn sure definitely we shall tackle the problem of starvation coupled with the poverty as well only mm. need is strong desire and strong will especially political will is required there should not be politicization because this is this is not a problem of only india but india indian problem at global level mm. we have to realize and achieve sustainable development goal by 2030 all the members of you know india being a member and mm. prominent goals are zero poverty and zero Uh, there is hunger, and therefore it is a very serious problem. It is a very problem of high intensity and gravity, and that should be taken seriously. Sincere, honest, rigorous efforts are necessary in the introduction and formulation of the remedies and measures and policies on the one hand, and mm. very higher level, honest, rigorous, and sincerity is necessary. And as Constitution has provided equity, social justice, and brotherhood, that is of crucial importance. and within right. the framework of constitution only we have yes, to formulate right. a policy we have to introduce and implement measures and remedies 
that only serve the purpose. So we should not take this problem casually. Some say this is not based, this is not uh, trustworthy. So for us, global hunger indexes, there can be, there can be weaknesses, there can be lacunas, but no alternative is there at this moment. To identify and to measure what is the extent and magnitude of uh, hunger and poverty that is there. So we should believe if alternative major or device or instrument is there, then we can go for that. But we mm. will make the comparison with whether this is this is reliable or that is reliable. But at this moment, we should trust this global hunger index, and it is eye opener. It mm. is eye opener yeah. for policy makers, eye opener for the political leaders, for the ministries, for the bureaucrats, for the common citizens, and and the and the well educated social activists and organisations as well. So we should take that very seriously. We should be honest, rigorous, and sincere in implementing and introducing major remedies and policies. Then and then only that will serve the purpose. Otherwise, it's impossible or it will be very difficult to realize and achieve the sustainable development goals like zero poverty and zero hunger. And this is opportunity which has been reflected by the intention is that. That intention is what is the extent and magnitude of Hungerness is there relating to a particular country or that global level. And what are the areas which are necessary to be improved? That is the intention. In the publication of Global Hunger Index, we should look at yeah. Global Hunger Index as an opportunity. And what yeah. your lacunas, what your weaknesses, what your shortcomings are there, we should identify. We know very well. And yeah. We should be rigorous, sincere, honest in implementation. And uh, it should be in the, in the framework of constitution. We should not violate the constitution, the right to live and uh, equity, justice, and brotherhood. Uh, we should, uh, that uh, socialistic pattern of society and social welfare, in that direction, is uh, endeavors are required, attempts are required. That is what urgent need of their work. So we should take very seriously the problem of hunger in the context of India, because the countries like uh, Pakistan, the country like China, country like Sri Lanka, country like Pakistan, Nepal, they have improved. They are at moderate level of problem. And we are at serious level. And they are not claiming economic supremacy. They are not claiming high trillion dollar economy. They are no. not claiming uh, to emerge out as economic developed country. They are not desirous to emerge out as we should do. But we are claiming that. But mm. the situation of hunger and consequently poverty like this. So we should be more cautious, more educated, more aware of and more rigorous, sincere, honest, and dynamic. So for us tackling the problem of hunger coupled with the problems like poverty, unemployment, inequality, that will serve the purpose. And special attentions are required towards education, health as well, and prominently employment. That is what yeah. the urgent need of their work is there. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, thank you so much, sir. I think we discussed the whole report. We have in, a, I'm in brief, and we have discussed the solution also. And uh, I think I don't want to repeat the, what you have said beautifully. I want to request the listeners, viewers that, you know, uh, if you want to uh, miss, uh, if you are missing some point, then you go back and forth and listen this, you, you know, uh, video many times so that you can have a very good grasp of this one. Uh, you have given, I think, the complete uh, uh, picture of the report and the solution also. And we should work along that one. And I think we hope that we will uh, achieve something far better than uh, what has been happening in the last uh, 30, 23 years or whatever. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, seven years in hand. And if we work with the Constitution of India uh, truthfully, honestly, uh, mm -hmm. then I think we will achieve it. Uh, thank you so much, sir. You joined you. today uh, with us. And uh, we will my be pleasure. again touching and we'll uh, have some more thank sessions. You, my pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Jabin, Jabin, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, friends, you watch the uh, today's session. I think uh, you this will be uh, uh, this remains recorded on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Whenever you want in the future, you can uh, watch it again and again, and you can have the uh, more knowledge about this. Uh, with this, I want to request that uh, MNT New Network you keep watching every day. Tomorrow is again the uh, session. Tomorrow is Monday, so. Uh, tomorrow it will be in Hindi. Vidyarthiyo ko samaj ki seva karne ke liye jyada se jyada sanskarit karne ki aavasakta hai. Uske vakta honge Mulnuwa se Sunil Kumar, C.E. se Das Pan se. To kal bhi aap log isse dekhna na bhule. Aur isi ke saath hum 
आज के प्रोग्राम को खत्म करेंगे जय भीम जय मल्यवासी जय संविधान जय भारत एम एन टी न्यूज नेटवर्क को सब्सक्राइब करें लाइक और फॉलो करना ना भूलें साथ ही बेल आइकॉन दबाकर जनजागृति की मुहिम में जुड़े रहें।